Hello, y'all. Y'all. <laughs> Hello and happy Tuesday. Uh, if it feels like you've gone back in time and you're watching Friday's video again, it's because it's, for me, it's the same day. Uh, but this is going up on Tuesday, so. Flash from the past. Friday me, still still feeling wicky wacky. Still, still in a silly goofy mood, but we're gonna go over what July looked like as far as my financial goals. So if you're new here, of which there are, there are some new people, which is wild, subscribing every day. This is crazy, tell your friends. Um, <laughs> if you're anything like me, you don't talk to your friends about the, the budget videos you watch on YouTube because they'll make fun of you. Um, but that's okay, I won't, I'm with you. I'm a budget nerd and I'm here to talk about my annual goals. You may be thinking annual goals, looks like you're tracking them every month, you're right. I have goals that I set forth for the year and then I like to just check in where I'm at with them every single month. So it is right now when I'm recording, it is August 4th. Uh, I usually like to do this on the first or second, but this week got away from me. I don't, I don't have a good excuse. Um, <laughs> So let's just check in on this. Um, again, if you're new, if you're not new and you need a refresher, uh, my student loans, if you don't know what's going on with student loans in the United States right now, first of all, I'm super jealous of you. Second of all, um, there's been a lot of up and down about student loan forgiveness and what's possible and what's gonna happen and what's not gonna happen and it was just so up and down and I had no idea what was gonna happen, if anything. So I have been saving every week, I get paid weekly, to pay down my student loans, but I've been putting it in a high yield savings account. That money has been earning interest this whole time. So I was able to earn interest on that money while I just hadn't waited and thought it was gonna happen. Um, obviously now uh, it's looking like forgiveness in the traditional sense of what we thought was gonna happen is not happening, which whatever, I don't wanna get into it. Um, but uh, so next, at the end of August, the last pay my last paycheck in August, I'm actually going to take all of the money out of my savings, besides my emergency fund, of course, don't worry, and make one very large, about $17,000 payment on these student loans. So these are the same right now, and they continue to be in the month of July, uh, but August we will see a major drop in that number, which is exciting. Um, I also track my annual income. This is a running total of my annual income. So I did not make $47,000 in June. I just got up to $47,000 in June, and in July, we got up to $54,755. Um, when I first became a manager in my company about two and a half years ago, that is about what they offered me as my yearly salary. So that was kind of neat to see. Looking forward to where we get. Um, I started my new job with my higher pay rate at the very, very last, on, like, on February 27th, so like the very tail end of February. So my second paycheck in March is where I started earning more money. Um, so yeah, that's gonna, it'll even out by the end of the year and we'll see, we'll see where I end up and then next year is a whole new ball game. Um, my net worth, ha we have seen some, we've seen some progress on the net worth in this, in the last, you know, in this year. So we can scroll up here. I've been tracking off and on um, one, negative 145. Obviously the massive amount of student loans. If anyone's watching this for the first time and they're like, wow, she's celebrating a negative six figure net worth first shut up <laughs> just kidding uh <laughs> yeah i am because it is you know it is what it is i can't will this mass amount of student loans away i obviously made some wacky decisions when i was in college and grad school um and i don't talk about it super often but i don't necessarily regret doing the things that i did uh, moving out of my hometown was the best thing that ever happened to me the best thing for my mental health it really changed the trajectory of my life around and if you know, the only way I saw to do it in that moment was to take out these loans and go to grad school and move across the country from every single person I know. Uh, and while if I had the knowledge and the wherewithal and the bandwidth in my brain, like if I just plop myself back five years in time, would I do it the same way again? Of course not, of course not. Um, but you know, to me in that moment, that was my only option. Um, and I have a pretty good life and I'm really, Glad I'm around for it, you know? So, yeah, I'm celebrating my negative six figure net worth. Got a little, a little sappy tangent, but you know, I just, I feel grateful. I feel grateful to be around to have a negative six figure net worth. <laughs> uh, and for it to be going, well, going up. I was gonna say going down, because this number is going down, which is good, because we want it to get to zero, but my net worth overall is going up, even though it's a large negative, you know? Math. Uh, 
124,793. We had about a $5,000 gain in net worth in the month of July, uh, which is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, that is a combination of my retirement accounts growing and just like better spending overall, just better choices in my spending. Um, we've been very, very, very busy. We've been very, very busy. And that means, and you know, it gives the opportunity on one hand for us to uh, not to spend money going out and doing stuff, but it also could be an opportunity to spend more eating out and like on convenience items. And we've been really working in the right direction. So that's exciting. Um, fat fire is not something I'm actively saving towards. Like I said, I have some retirement accounts, but I don't contribute a huge amount of my paycheck. Most of my paycheck goes to staying alive. I live in New York City. But uh, my, my major savings chunk goes towards student loans and not towards my retirement accounts for right now. Um, but my company has a really solid match. I, you know, I have some money going into savings in that way. Um, and I just like to track and see this number is, if I retired today, how much money would my investments generate monthly? So every month I would get $123. That's not bad. That's more than my phone bill now. That's almost or pretty close to my phone bill and my Wi-Fi. It's not rent. It's not living. But it's something. Um, home ownership. That was something I was throwing, obviously, you can see a little teeny bit here and there at. Not a ton. Um, but I am, I am engaged. We are going to be getting married. And we are cash flowing that wedding ourselves. So I decided that any little tiny bits of money that I had saving up for other things is into into the wedding pot. Um, it, weddings are expensive even if you're trying to do them cheaply. We're not even paying for a venue and we're still gonna be spending a huge amount of money. It's crazy. Um, similar scenario, fully funded emergency fund. I can change this because that is not even, not even true. Um, fully funded emergency fund, I have capped. 25, 50 and three cents is, it's about a month of expenses for me. It would be cutting a few of my expenses currently, but uh, if something terrible happens, I lose my job or something. Um, it's actually only lose my job. If, if, I'm, if I'm injured in any way, my company has incredible like short-term disability, long-term disability. Um, I've got life insurance if something happens to me and Shay needs to you know keep the house running. Um, but this is if I lost my job for some reason, which is not likely. Um, some people work in like volatile industries. Uh, I do not. Um, I feel very secure in my job. I don't think I don't think it's going anywhere. But if I were to lose my job, I would have a month, one hundred percent of one month's worth of expenses covered. And I, uh, like I said before, I have some skills. I'm a barista. I live in New York City. I could get a job. It wouldn't be paying as much as I make now for sure. But it would make this money go a lot farther in the time that I spent looking for a new job. So yeah. And then this is the one. This is the one I know you're all waiting for. I said in the year 2023 that I wanted to cut my eating out, my ordering food, my lazy after work pickups. I wanted to cut that budget down. Or I wanted to cut that spending down half. So in the year 2022, I spent $5,000, actually a little more than $5,000 on just getting food, ordering breakfast. It's DoorDash. DoorDash was a big one. Uh, picking up food after work, just convenient stuff because I didn't feel like cooking. I didn't have my house stocked. Um, in 2023, I have moved in with Shay. We're engaged. We live with no roommates, so we have the whole fridge to ourselves, and we can like plan ahead and spend money on groceries and food that is quality and matters to us. But still, the eating out was creeping up and up and up. And obviously, as you can see, we were getting in. We hit 2,000 at the end of June, and we still had six months left, and the budget was $2,500. And I was, you know, I'm pretty nervous. I was like, I don't think we can do this. It doesn't feel possible. And then I only spent 75 bucks. Come on. I know you're cheering in your homes. Your friends and family are going, what's going on? What's going on? You're like, Kayla only spent $75. I know. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, but I am very proud of myself. This is one meal out with a friend of mine who I hadn't seen in quite a while. It was planned. Kind of. We didn't plan to go out. You know, it was like a, a planned outing, and that's the only time that I went out and like bought food that wasn't like like. For those of you who are worried, like date night does not count in the ordering out or eating eating out budget. 
dates are intentional, we plan ahead for those, we budget for those in a separate category. This is simply just grabbing stuff because we don't feel like cooking or because I didn't plan ahead or because I'm out with friends and I've had a couple too many drinks and I want to get uh, mozzarella sticks. You know, like stuff like that, that's eating out. And I did that one single time. I went to a really nice dinner that was really high quality and was really worth it with a very good friend of mine and this money was well spent and intentional. And it was only $75. And that's, I mean, come on. You're not gonna tell me, you're not gonna tell me that's not incredible. Looking at all the other members, looking at the rest of the months and all the money we spent, that is, that's pretty freaking good. I'm gonna take, I, that was good. I, that was a good one. And can I say, we're hanging out with some friends this weekend. I'm going out of town for a couple weeks for work. And so we're having some friends over tomorrow and they're coming over and we're making food at home for our friends. We sent them a nice little menu. We said, here's the selections for the evening and we're gonna have a wonderful night hanging out in our house and eating food at home. I don't, I don't know what happened to us, but we got, all of a sudden, we, we, we're, I wanna hit that number so bad. Like if I can, 2,500, it felt like, it felt so possible in the beginning. I was like, oh, I got this, look at me. And then summer came and you know, summer running around, goofing off, having a good time. My friends are like, you know, it just, there's just so much to do in New York City. There's so much to eat in New York City. We love high quality food and eating out and just oysters. Oh my God, we love oysters. And you know, food, it, it feels, we wanted to spend money on quality experience and just like joyfulness and not on goofing off, ordering DoorDash because we don't feel like stopping and making food before bed. We don't feel like we want to get McDonald's. And that's crazy to me when New York City has some of the best food in the whole world. And I was blowing, you know, $5,000 on uh, Wingstop and McDonald's. Who does that? Not me, because I only spent sub 80 bucks. We got Korean barbecue. It was an incredible meal. It was worth every penny. I'm definitely gonna go back to that place. You know, it just, it feels so much better when I spend the money and it really is worth it. So I feel really good about that. I feel really good about all of this, honestly. It's really good progress across the board. Um, I am so, this is such a weird sentence. I am so excited to make a large student loan payment next month. I'm glad the payments are gonna be going because I'm gonna get to watch that number drop, which as you all know, I'm excited about. I know you're excited about. And I, I don't know, it just feels good. I feel good. My life is good. I hope yours is too. Have a good one and I'll see you Friday.